welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life, and I believe you're really going to enjoy the program today. You know, yesterday we started teaching you how unforgiveness is a key element that will cause so much powerlessness in your life, but if you learn how to forgive, it can cause you to enjoy your life tremendously and open the door for God to be able to work to bring the breakthroughs that you need. Today we're going to talk again with Pastor Billy Joe Darty from Tulsa, and we're going to share with you the importance of forgiving not only others, but yourself as well. Well, Pastor, this is a big subject, isn't it? It's a huge subject and affecting millions of people because uh, Jesus said offenses will come. Yes. Most people don't claim that as a promise because it's not a promise. Right. It's a revelation, right. a fact of human life. And this is a time and a day where the word of choosing to forgive, yes. not based on our feelings, but based on the love of God. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind, tender-hearted, <laughs> forgiving one another, even as God yes. in Christ, or for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. So how do we forgive? <laughs> well, it's very simple even as God forgave us. People say, how can I forgive? Even as God forgave you. Quickly Very and freely. <laughs> yeah, quickly, freely. And he did it. He did it as an act of faith and love. And those two elements have to come in forgiveness. Right. We do it by faith and we do it by love. And, you know, I think that it's, it's good to bring the point across that we're not telling people uh, not to be hurt. You know, when somebody hurts you, you're hurt. And there is a wound there in your emotions that many times only God can heal. So we're not telling people not to be hurt. And, and you may choose to forgive someone and still have your feelings hurt. I had a situation just in the last year where someone hurt me very badly. And uh, I know enough that I knew I needed to choose to forgive them. And for me, part of walking that out is not to say anything unkind about them. You know, the Bible says, bless your enemies and do not curse them. Well, the word bless means to speak well of, and the word curse means to speak evil of. Yeah. So taking this forgiving people thing into the practical realm, what does that mean? Well, it means I pray for them, like the Bible tells me to, and I ask God to, to bless them, and I don't think that always means he's going to go get them a new car. I mean, I think that Sometimes he blesses them with revelation <laughs> that opens their eyes yeah. so they can actually then get free themselves. Get free themselves. But I think it also means that, that then I'm very careful how I talk about that person because so often when someone's hurt us, we want to tell everybody what they've done mm -hmm. and we don't want somebody else to like them. We don't want somebody else to have a good relationship with them. And, and if anybody, you know, feels toward this person in a kindly way or or talks about them in a way that would indicate that they think they have a good reputation. We want to smear that reputation. So God has taught me that it's very important mm -hmm. that I bless people and don't curse them, and that I'm trusting God to be my vindicator. So I chose to forgive this person. I didn't feel any different. Every time I thought about the situation, every time somebody brought that person's name up, I still felt the pain. But I would not talk bad about them. I would not say anything unkind. Of, every day I prayed for them to be blessed. Every day I prayed for God to do great things in their life. And I started praying for restoration, for God to restore what could be restored. And not too many months went by, and sure enough, that relationship was restored. Praise and God. so we don't have to feel that we can't be hurt. That just really came to me that I don't want people to think we're saying they can't be hurt. Right. You can be hurt, but you can still make a choice to do what's right. You know, as a little boy, I uh, went barefoot a lot <laughs> and had times where I'd get thorn stuck in my foot. And when that thorn went in, it was really painful. And the best thing I could do would be to pull the thorn out. That didn't stop all the pain, but it stopped the majority of the pain. Then we put something on it, you know, some type of medicine and Band-Aid and get some shoes on. And 
it would take some time to heal it. What happens with people with bitterness, it's like that thorn, is they leave the thorn in. Right. And it continually then sticks them, brings pain. Um, what's happened with you by removing the thorn of the bitterness and resentment is it's taken some time, but you've gotten healed in your soul and a relationship got healed. Those three words, don't nurse it, <laughs> curse it, or rehearse it. Yeah. <laughs> People want to nurse it. Oh, I'm so yeah. hurt. Um, Ed Cole had this word. Winners or losers talk about what they're going through. Winners talk about what they're going to. That's good. And we can nurse a situation, talk about how horrible and terrible. Or we can curse it, as you said, speaking bad about that individual. Or we can rehearse it in the ears of everybody else. But that only keeps the thing going. Uh, bitterness and resentment, someone has said, it's like drinking poison That's right. and hoping the other person dies. That's exactly right. You know, holding that grudge against them. So when we forgive, what we do is we get the poison out of us. Well, you know, we were talking earlier about offenses and how, how this is one message that you can use probably every day in your life, mm -hmm. whether it's getting aggravated at somebody in traffic yeah. or something that happens at work or something unfair or, or whatever. But it's very interesting to me that in Matthew chapter 24 that one of the signs of the end times, many, many will be offended. Many will be offended, and then it says they begin to stumble and fall away. And the reason why Satan works so hard to bring offense and to fill people's hearts full of offense is because when you are bitter, resentful, offended, full of unforgiveness, it hinders your relationship with God. You cannot fellowship with God properly. Your faith doesn't work. Mm. You cannot really in good conscience pray asking God with faith to do things for you when your own heart is full of all that poison. And so Satan is just really doing a number on people, so to speak. And I, you know, of course, over the years of my teaching and preaching ministry, just like you, I've taught many messages on this subject in a variety of ways. And I usually will ask at the end of the teaching, now anybody in here today who needs to forgive somebody, would you please stand up so I can pray for you? I've never had less than 75 to 80 percent of wow. the entire congregation. It, that is evidence of the, this message's importance. And no wonder there's so much powerlessness mm -hmm. in people's lives. And so we want to talk about that just a little bit more when we come back. Well, how much is too much to forgive? Could you forgive a person who murdered someone that you love? Find out how one man dealt with that coming up next. Today's offer is one of my all-time favorite teachings from Joyce, and it may be the key that unlocks some of the greatest freedom you could ever imagine. It's called Do Yourself a Favor, Forgive. If you know Joyce's background, you know that she came from an abusive past. Well, she contributes her success today and her freedom in the fact that God helped her to forgive. If you take advantage of this and apply it to your life, you too can experience that kind of freedom. This series is available this week with a donation of $25 or more. And today, when you request the offer, we'll also send you the book.